Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the Seal Mall type run of EV Emerald. Last time we caught not just a Skarmori, we found a shiny Pokemon, a Spinda to be exact. I can't use it for battling, but you know what? I can use it as an HM slave. No strength and rock smash now. I also got the blue, yellow, and red flutes and took advantage of this to do a little bit of level grinding. In doing so, I caught a top Matang Pursuit, gave it black glasses to boost its power if I need it, I taught Skarmori Steel Wing and gave it a King's Rock with my Zigzag we found. The objective this time is to proceed the Meteor Falls and continue the story. So, I forget. It's, yeah. Uh, hold on. No, it's, it's not him that we talk to, it's his brother that gives you Dig. But, uh, you can come back later after getting the Hall of Fame and getting the first fossil from the Mirage Tower. And that will allow you to get the other fossil you didn't get. And in Manila Emeralds, you can find Wild Ditto down there. I don't know if I'll be teaching something Dig for battling, but I am going to need to use it later. It's essential for getting Registeel. And we get the TM for Roar, which, uh... Well, I already got a Pokémon that knows Roar. If I level up, I'm, I'm never going to use this. Whatever. Let's just take you out. I'm not too far off from evolving both Laron and Matang. They both evolve in the 40s range. Laron evolves at level 42, and Matang and I leave at 45. So, uh, not too far off now, in theory. Now you may think, oh, I'm going to be very overleveled for uh, Flannery. Not really. Also, you got to consider, again, fire types, the no overheat. Yeah, if I get hit even once, that's going to knock out any of my Pokemon. So, yeah. Consequently, I need to make that fight as unfair as possible. Oh, something I forgot about the King's Rock. Um, so, what the King's Rock does, well, other than evolving certain Pokémon, like evolving Slowpoke and a Slow King, you give it to a Pokémon and it adds a small chance that any move it uses will make an opponent flinch. But it only applies to certain specific moves. I don't know what moves those are off the top of my head. I'll have to look that up. But as Skarmori is my fastest Pokémon, that would be the ideal one to give it to. Granted, even then, it's not that fast, but it's fast enough. Anyways, we can go behind the house here. We'll be going inside in a second. Hmm, Flawblue. Not that great on its own, but if you evolve it, this... Well, it can give you Altaria, which is the first dragon type you'll get, be able to get access to. It's a shitty dragon type, but it's a dragon type. Did I get any items? Yes, I did. Super Potion? Person very secure, confusion, but of course I got the yellow flute now, so it's kind of redundant. This guy gives you a... well, gives you just a random berry. 
And now up here is Lanette's place. You talk to her and she gives you a polka doll. I don't know what her issue is, it's more organized than my desk is. And we have another double battle. Okay. Graveler needs to go down. It'll probably know magnitude, so we're just gonna take that out. There you go. Now we're just gonna go up here, battle this chick real quick. Hung on by a thread, didn't you? Okay, so some of you may wonder, okay, well, if Skarmory is better at physical attacking, right? Why does it go Swift? Why would I keep it? Well, that's because in the first three generations, whether a move is physical or special is tied specifically to its type. For example, all normal type attacks are all physical. Water type attacks are all special. And so on and so forth. And typeless attacks, which uh, of which there's only one, struggle, are physical, I believe. At least, typeless attacks that actually do damage. Because there is another one, Curse. And that one, of course does different things, depending on if it's a ghost type using it or not. I probably will end up using Curse at some point, um, because Registeel knows it. And it's not a bad move to use on it, actually, because it's not that fast anyway, so losing speed doesn't really matter. Oh. Yep! One in ten chance to miss! Down you go. And we're coming up close to 10 minutes, so we're gonna cut right here real quick. And we're back, moving on. Carbo, so that'll boost speed. I'm going to use that right away on Skarmori. Oh, right. We also got an energy powder. Energy powder, for all intents and purposes, it is a cheaper version of a super potion that will decrease your Pokemon's happiness values, which, that's very situational. It only really matters if it's a Pokemon that evolves through friendship, like Eevee, for example, or if you're using Return or Frustration. Frankly, Frustration is pretty much never worth using because it you really have to try to get a Pokémon to hate you. Whereas a Pokémon will start to like you over time just by walking around with it.
Oh! Also, I rem just remember something. I think you could still do it in this generation. I forget. Let's see. Yeah, something you could do in uh, generations 2 and 3 only, I believe, is you could use cut to clear tall grass. So, if you don't mind being a little slow, you can use this to spare yourself some wild encounters. Unless the game feels like being a smartass, like that. Also, while we're here, I might as well show you what's, what Secret Power does. So if you have a Pokémon that knows Secret Power, you press A on an area like this, for example. You'll use Secret Power, and it opens up a little room that you can decorate. So, I don't think I have it much that I can put in here. It's just the doll. Dolls, I believe, in this game, you have to put it on something, like a rug or a desk. But, well, there we go. And back in the day, you could mix records with other players, which would let them visit your secret base and battle you. Now, of course, this feature wasn't that popular in, uh, well, North America, because, of course, population density is way lower in the U.S. compared to Japan. This is why certain features that rely on socialization were never very popular. It was often easier and cheaper to just get yourself a second Game Boy and a second game to complete your Pokedex. Although in Gen 3, it was actually even worse, because not only did you need all the games to complete the Pokedex, but you also had to buy the spin-off games for the GameCube, which were Coliseum and XD. Which, that makes it even more expensive. In fact, I think Gen 3 is the most expensive as far as completing the National Dex goes. And that's not even including the mythical Pokémon. Because, of course, Deoxys was a, uh, well, Deoxys you could only get by, by digital distribution with Mystery Gift. Same with Mew. But... Jirachi and Celebi were pretty infuriating, because you needed to use a special promo disc that was only one use only that came with Pokémon Coliseum. The Japanese version came with a disc for Celebi. The American version came with a disc for Jirachi. So, not only did you need to have a GameCube, you also needed a PAL version, and you needed both the North American and PAL versions of Coliseum. Oh, and by the way, you had to buy Coliseum new, not used, because otherwise the disc would have been used by someone already. Not to mention that if you bought it used, you probably wouldn't have the disc anyway, so... Oh, and Ho and Lugia were also technically event Pokémon, but you could also just get them from regular gameplay in Coliseum and XD. In Coliseum, you got it at the end of one of the tournament segments. I forget which one. I think it's Mount Battle. I don't know. I never had a GameCube. And X in XD, Lugia is well technically the final boss. But you have to purify it before you can transfer it to another game. And now we move on. Should be one more trainer right here. I don't know about you, but it should echo if you're up in the mountains. Maybe you're just shit at it. Yeah, you know what? That's what I'm gonna say. Skill issue.
Oh yeah, Steel Wing can boost your defense. That seems to have been how Steel-type attacks were balanced in Gen 2 and 3, is they had a chance to miss, but they could either boost your stats or... Yeah, I think they just boost your stats. But Iron Tail, not worth it. Steel Wing and Metal Claw, not particularly powerful. And here we are at Meteor Falls. This map is also broken. No matter where you enter from, if you go to the ground floor of Meteor Falls, you will always enter at the eastern side. Which is a bit of a problem, because the post-game includes the ability to battle Steven here. In fact, beating him is the win condition for this monotype. So, this is another one of those maps where I've had to make a modification. I'm not going to go up there. Not yet, anyway. Of course, even if I did go up there, I wouldn't be able to access Steven because, well, there's an event flag. And I'll show you the alterations they were. So, well, I'll talk about this after this damn Zubat goes away. Okay. You know what? Let's make this easier on myself. Use a repel. So here's our first encounter with Team Magma. Now, some may wonder, what is Team Magma based on? Because, of course, Team Aqua, their theme's obvious. They're pirates. Team Magma is supposed to be... Their theme is supposed to be ninjas, apparently. I don't really see it either. Bye, Johnny Depp. And there's Professor Cosmo. We'll be talking to him later. Okay, so first thing I had to edit was this. These stairs are not here in vanilla or in the normal hack. I added those because, again, the level transitions are broken here. That rock's actually also not there. That was just an aesthetic change by me. I figured, you know what? If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. And I also added this bridge. And I fucked up coding that! Well, it seems that the hack dev isn't the only one that needs to learn a thing or two. But, again, that's just so I can access that area over there, which normally I'm not able to. But now, we come back to Route 115. We were up here back when we were dealing with... Um, well, when we were training for Fighting Roxanne. And this gives you a shortcut back to Rustboro City. There's a couple of items up here, and a couple of trainers you can battle. Another power point up. Those are always nice to get. In fact... You can also get power point ups from Pokemon with pickup, but it was heavily nerfed in uh, Emerald version. So, in order to get pickups from, well, in order to get pickups from pickup, uh, well, power point ups for pickup, you would have to have a Pokemon, I think, in the 70s or 80s before you start getting them. And I'm talking about the level of the Pokemon that actually has pickup. Keep that in mind. And there's Spoink. That's one of the more morbid Pokedex entries. Supposedly, if you remove... Well... Supposedly, if you remove the pearl that's bouncing on its head, it loses its power. 
But also, if it ever stops bouncing, its heart stops. Yeah. That's, uh, kind of morbid. Oh, that was a waste. <clears throat> Down you go. Also, um, yeah, the first of the Pokemon that Collector used, Zongoose, very, very good. Not only does it have an ability that basically makes it immune to poison, but it's one of the few Pokemon that learns Swords Dance by leveling up. You pair that up with same type attack bonus boosted Slash, and uh, Zongoose is a monster with very little setup required. Oh, and if you wanted to just really make it ridiculous, you can, of course, add the Silk Scarf or even better, a Scope Lens. But the Scope Lens is something you only get post-game. That's a Battle Frontier item. By the time you're getting a Scope Lens, you've basically done everything you can do. And now there's one last trainer. There's more you could do on this route, too. But, in order to get there, you need Surf. For that, I'd need to beat... The, well, you need to beat your dad, 5th Gym Leader, and get Surf from Wally's dad. We'll be back up here around then. There's a lot of backtracking we're gonna be doing. And I think that's a wrap for now. So, next time, we're going to be going to Mount Chimney to deal with Team Magma. Anyways, if you like what you see, be sure to comment, subscribe, maybe check out my Rumble page. And I'll see you all next time.